there and welcome once again to The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers with you as we are every week. We're glad you're with us. We're here to meet interesting people and deal with topical issues. We welcome in a good friend today who's in a new position. Yes, uh, as of May, uh, Natalie Shirley, who is our guest today, became uh, the fourth president of OSU OKC, uh, of course, headquartered here in Oklahoma City, and uh, that fine university is going to be the topic of our uh, show today with Natalie leading the uh, information charge. She's led an interesting life. We'll learn more about her and her direction at OSU OKC today on The Verdict. Stay with us. It's time, America. Our energy future can be ours again with American natural gas. We have an abundant, affordable supply, unrivaled anywhere. One billion dollars a day for importing foreign oil isn't just a statistic, it's an opportunity. 30% lower greenhouse emissions isn't a pipe dream, it's a choice. Now is the time. Chesapeake, America's champion of natural gas. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma, working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. This man is having a heart attack, and he doesn't even know he's at risk. Heart attacks aren't always as dramatic as you see on TV. Gone unchecked, heart disease could crumple everything. A simple heart scan could save your life. Get a $50 heart scan at St. Anthony, the most trusted experts in cardiovascular care. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. And Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Today we're really pleased to have join us uh, this Sunday morning, Natalie Shirley, the president of OSU OKC. Natalie uh, uh, did her undergraduate work at Oklahoma State University, very appropriately, and uh, did her law work at the University of Oklahoma. She, uh, for a period of time in Washington, D.C., was president of an organization called ICI Mutual. Uh, it was an insurance company, uh, insurance-affiliated company. Uh, she came back to Oklahoma and served four years uh, under Governor Brad Henry as Secretary of Commerce and Tourism. And uh, this last May, she was named uh, uh, president of uh, OSU OKC. She is the fourth president of that fine uh, university here in Oklahoma City and the first female president. And this is her first visit to the verdict, but I guarantee is this will not be her last, or at least if she enjoys herself, it won't be. Glad to have you. Thank you very much. I am so excited to be here. Well, it's, it's great to have you um, at OSU OKC. And I guess that's kind of a new role for you. You've done a lot of different things in your life, but being the president of, of a university is a little bit new. What's that like? You know, it, it, it is, and it, it's a tremendous amount of fun. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I get to marry the, the passions that I, that I have in life and, and, and enjoy it with, with folks that, that are intelligent, excited, and, and forward thinking. And, and mm -hmm. so it, it's really just a tremendously energizing sort of job. Yeah. Well, what's it like though to be the, what do you, what, what, is, what are the president's job duties on a, on a, on a daily basis? What, what, what do you do? Well, um, it ranges as all jobs do from the ridiculous to the sublime. <laughs> um, uh, you know, for example, I came on campus and I discovered that inexplicably um, our campus was red, green, and gray. There wasn't an orange thing in sight. <laughs> and I thought, well, this is just not going to work. And so I said, make it orange. Well, the first thing that happened was they went and dug up the red geraniums. And I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> that's not what I meant. If God made it red, then we'll leave it red. Um, so, so that's sort of the, you know, that end of it. 
<laughs> but on the sublime part of it, you get to to engage with with folks that that are are trying to to make a better uh, a, a better path for themselves and their families. And as I as I started to say, it marries this this great passion I have mm -hmm. for for Oklahoma. Oklahoma is, I think, one of the most fantastic states. It's full of wonderful people. It has a rich history, but we are sometimes burdened by by the issues that we face. Um, Oklahoma has, for the last 20 years, has been blessed with with a a, a tremendous opportunity in terms of employment. Um, our unemployment rate is, is one of the lowest in the nation, even through this recession. However, we are 48th in the nation for children that live in poverty, and we're 47th in the nation for families that live in poverty. And so when you put those two statistics together, we find that we're working as hard as we can, and we're not getting anywhere. Well, that's where, where my passion comes in, is that we have to make that different. We have to change um, uh, what we're seeing. And the only path, the only way we're going to change that is through education. And so at Commerce, um, I worked very hard to bring the kinds of jobs that, that require a great education and therefore, of course, pay a, a high wage. But in order for those jobs to stay, and in order for us to attract more of those types of jobs, and thereby lift the, 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 the state, we have to have more educated Oklahomans. And so OSU OKC just fits mm -hmm. right into that. Right. Well, <clears throat> you've run a large company in Washington, D.C. You've uh, been on the cabinet of uh, Governor Brad Henry for a number of years. What about those experiences equipped you to take on a university presidency, how, how has that assisted you? Well, the, the biggest challenge you have in running any organization, it doesn't really matter how big or how large it is, and it doesn't matter what the title is on the door that you walk through. The biggest issue that you face in private business, in state government, and at the university is a finite set of funding. I mean, that's true everywhere. Um, and personnel issues. Um, you have to deal with the personalities of a wide variety of people and, and encourage them, cajole them, sometimes um, force them to work together towards a common goal. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's the issue. So that's the common denominator. Yeah. Always. Yeah, you have a lot of stakeholders. You have the regents, you have the faculty, you have the students, you have the students' parents. Mm -hmm. Which group do you spend your most time with? Well, right now, the, the, during the summer break, um, I spend most of my time with staff. Um, however, um, the faculty probably consumes uh, probably 40% of the day right mm -hmm. now. I would expect that in two or three short weeks, um, the students are going to occupy a, a significantly larger chunk of, of time just simply because of all the stakeholders you've mentioned, the students are, are simply the most important. If we keep their interests out in front of us and front and center, um, then all of the other stakeholders mm -hmm. will ultimately work through the, the, the process. Let's step back a little bit and talk about some of the history of uh, OSU OKC. When did it get started? Why did it get started? What is its mission? And, and kind of tell us what you can about its historical background. Well, I, I think interestingly, and this is probably the only university, certainly it's the only university in this state that was formed this way, um, but maybe even in the nation, the Oklahoma City Chamber of Commerce came to OSU and said, we need this type of training in Oklahoma City. And so it was at the Chamber's instigation and at the Chamber's prosecution of of, of this idea that OSU OKC was, was born. Um, we are celebrating our 50th anniversary this year, so we were formed in, in 1961, um, and uh, has spent most of our career um, at the campus out on Portland and, and 10th. What about, uh, tell our viewers about your enrollment and your faculty. How many, people, how many folks are enrolled? How does that change from year to year? And then how many faculty do you have? And uh, sure. what are their inclinations? We have about <laughs> 7,500 students. Um, we have 81 full-time faculty members, and they're fantastic. 
we have over 250 adjunct professors. And that's our business model, is to draw experts from the community out to the campus to, to help educate and train our, our students. Um, and we have about 250 folks um, that serve as, as staff members um, in student services and, and operations, et, et cetera. Um, so it's, it's really quite a large campus out there. And these faculty that are full-time, in which areas of, of study do they typically? We have six academic divisions. Um, we have a health science, sciences division. Um, we have one of the best nursing programs in the state. Mm -hmm. Our pass rate exceeds the state and national average. Um, we have an energy program where we have wind turbine um, um, uh, and other sorts of, of, of programs. Um, we have a business technologies division. We have an amazing horticulture um, division. I don't know if you know this, but we actually have a five-hole golf course out on our out on our campus. Yeah, I've seen <laughs> it. I saw Kent look up. Like, uh, that's tomorrow's that. plan. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen anyone play it, but I've seen the course out there, and I know it's out there to, to teach them about the, about soils and and, exactly. and, and, uh, and golf course maintenance and those types. Exactly. Of things. We have a fantastic um, early childhood education program. We have police and safety, as you know. Uh, Mayor, our um, uh, the city has both a a fire and police mm -hmm. training program on our campus, which complements our own police and fire safety training, um, early childhood development. There, there are just a number of, of of really fine programs out there. Now, your campus, we're about out of time on this segment, but your campus is located at uh, what tenth and tenth uh, and Portland. It runs Portland. all the way down to Reno. We have that entire strip. Um, just on the west side of, of, of I-44. Some pretty good real estate. It is. <laughs> Natalie Shirley is the president of OSU OKC. More with her when we get back on The Verdict. The thing that has made the most sense for me is realizing that I am still an educator, and that is what I do at the Chickasaw Nation. I'm Dr. Amanda Cobb-Greetham, I'm a historian, and I'm Chickasaw. The Chickasaw Cultural Center is amazing. It is a very, very special place devoted to the sharing and to the celebration of Chickasaw history and culture. State-of-the-art technology exhibits that are not like anything I've ever seen. The Spirit Forest is incredible, and you feel as if you have actually just walked into a forest with huge trees all around you. It's timeless, and yet it's sort of also representative of our time depth, to really just sort of reach through time and touch the past. By the end of the exhibits, you really have a sense of Chickasaw cultural and political resurgence, and the extent to which we are a healthy, dynamic, and vital tribe today. Chickasaws have always been an inclusive people. This is something for the whole community and for the state of Oklahoma. In 25 years, world energy demand will grow by 44% with oil and natural gas largely meeting the need. The question is, will America's demand be met by American resources? Oklahoma says yes. We're developing the largest oil and natural gas discoveries America has seen in 40 years. It's creating jobs and millions in tax revenue for schools, roads, and hospitals. Oklahoma's oil and natural gas industry, advancing our state, empowering our nation. When you have something important to communicate, it becomes clear that there's a lot of competition for your audience's attention. So how can your message stand out and actually resonate with your audience? Legal Graphics has the answers. The team at Legal Graphics will work with you to plan, design, and even test your presentation to ensure your message will be heard and remembered. Call Legal Graphics today to schedule an appointment. The readiness is all. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Natalie Shirley is our guest. She's the president of OSU OKC. What sort of challenges have you faced in this new role? Well, I think that, that you know, the first challenge you always face is where do I park and where's the <laughs> ladies room? Um, but once I got those down, um, uh, we have the challenges that, that all institutions in Oklahoma and across the nation are facing, and that is, is um, less funding, um, having to do more with fewer resources, that sort of thing. Um, however, in those kinds of, of, of times, there are opportunities. 
and and so we just look for those opportunities to to tighten our belts and, and make sure that we that we focus our, our mission. Um, but the other the other challenge that that I've seen that I really do see as an opportunity, and that is to make sure that we fully tie that university, which has its roots in Oklahoma City businesses, back to the community. We have have sections of our of our campus that are very tightly tied to this community. Um, we have a great partnership with with OG&E. Um, we do a lot of things with the hospitals because of our, our outstanding nursing program. Um, but there is more that we can and should do. And, and one of the things that, that I intend to do is listen to the community and say, what is it that you're needing? What types of, of employees are you needing? What kinds of programs do we need to have mm -hmm. out at OSU OKC? So while it's a challenge, it's really an opportunity. And the 50th anniversary of the, of the university is coming up. It is, it is, and we just have great plans. Um, well, the first thing we're doing, as I said earlier, is we're oranging up the campus. I, it is OSU, and it needs to be OSU. You need to know it the, the moment you walk on the campus and the minute you drive by it. Um, so you're going to see some, some changes um, uh, over, the, over the next few, few weeks and, and, and months. But this 50th anniversary is a great opportunity for us to, to recognize and honor the shoulders that we stand on. Dr. Jerry Carroll, who was my predecessor, just did an amazing job out there. Um, and we honor that by continuing to move forward in the way that, that, that others before us have. Um, so uh, November, we're going to roll out our master plan. Um, we've never had a master plan for the campus. And so over the last few weeks, I've surveyed the, the students, the faculty, and the staff and said, what do you want to see on our physical plant? And I've gotten literally hundreds of suggestions. Um, those are being compiled and, and sorted through, prioritized. They'll be sent off to the master planners, um, the architects in Stillwater. And come November, we're going to roll out a master plan, which will show us where we're going to where we're going to go for the next 50 years. Mm -hmm. So I'm very excited about that. If you were doing something that I bet you've done a lot of already and will do more, talking to a prospective student or talking to parents of a prospective student and they ask the question, why OSU OKC instead of several other possible educational opportunities? What would you tell them? Well, I think the, <clears throat> the first thing I would say is is that that we are a best value. In fact, one of the local news outlets recently called us the best value for education in, in Oklahoma City. Um, our tuition is, is low, um, but the, the important thing is, is that our faculty and staff are dedicated to these students. Um, uh, I have children in my own home that, that are students. And at OSU OKC, they get an answer when they email them. They get a call back. Um, they can walk into their offices. The, the staff knows what they're, they, they know what they're doing. The faculty are engaged. It's the kind of place where, where you can get a fantastic education and, and yet walk shoulder to shoulder with folks that are completely interested in you moving forward in life. Do you, do you have residential halls or are they all commuter types? No, it, it, mm -hmm. it, it's totally a commuter campus, which adds the challenge of how do you bring it together. Mm -hmm. What are the, the most popular programs on campus? Well, nursing, of course, is, is, is a very popular program. Um, our energy transmission program is very popular. Energy um, transmission Transmission, that, that's, what, that's the work that we, that we do with OG&E mm -hmm. um, in terms of pole, energy, that, that sort of thing. Wind farm. Um, I guess. We have a wind farm out there. We have a, our, our own turbine out there. Um, uh, some of the other programs I th that I think are are really just terrific, of course, are our fire and safety, um, our police safety, our early childhood development. We see a lot of students in that. And then one that I didn't mention is we actually have a vet tech program, um, and that it's the only vet tech program on this side of the state. And so it, when you go into in, into a veterinary clinic and, and, and those loving arms first take your pet, that is, that, that's, that is someone that we've mm -hmm. likely trained. Where do you want to go in the future with this? Where, where, where do you want this university to head with? 
in that direction? Well, I think that that we must tie ourselves, as I said, more closely to the community and make sure that we're serving serving its needs. Um, but we also need to to look to to our parent, um, which is OSU, and make sure that we are are um, moving towards towards degrees that transfer easily, um, bring more programs from OSU onto onto our campus, um, and provide secondly or thirdly the, the services that our students need. We have a tremendous parking issue. I mean, our our growth. Um, over the last two years has been fantastic. We've grown 20% just in the last two years. Um, and so we've got folks parking on the grass and, and, and on the tennis courts. Um, so we've got to get a parking structure Not in, on the golf course, place. I hope. Uh, well, I, I, I suspect the first time they tried it, it would be the last time they tried it. Um, but in any event, we, we've, we've got to, to absorb some of those growing pains. Uh, <clears throat> you mentioned your tuition. Is, is your hour hourly charge for tuition different than what OSU and Stillwater would charge or is it the it, same? It is, it's it is, different. yeah. They're, they're, uh, every, u every university within the system um, and in, in Oklahoma sets their, their own oh. um, uh, tuition based on, on a number of factors yeah. um, in the same way that you would set your, your hourly mm -hmm. rate. Well is the relationship between your university and the Stillwater campus the same as maybe Southwestern State and Weatherford's would be to Oklahoma State or is, there, is, is it a different model uh, of, of subsidiary? It, it's a slightly different, slightly different model. Um, we are a self-contained campus. Our budget is our budget. Um, but we report, I report directly to Burns um, and the campus is it follows a lot of the procedures and policies, but nevertheless, we are standalone, and so we also report to the regents. I would think that that working relationship with with Oklahoma State, the, the fine university that it is, and getting better all the time, uh, would be of real value to you. The interchange of faculty, the interchange of ideas and programs, uh, those are resources that you have available that many institutions don't have. Absolutely. You're going to get a degree from OSU. OSU is, is, is um, the, one of the reasons that, that we exist um, and the tie that we have with OSU is strong but it can be and will be stronger. It, it, Burns and I have had, had a number of conversations about the fact that we want to make sure that we that we create a clear pathway for our students from OSU OKC to OSU Stillwater. Are there any upcoming programs you'd like to talk about? We're getting ready to open a new engineering building. Um, hmm. It's 26,000 square feet. It's Goodness. LEED certified. Um, and our engineering programs will, will go into, into that. Um, and and in, addition, in addition to that, um, we've got some plans for our early childhood program um, on the drawing board. Um, some exciting things that I think are going to come up. Um, and then, of course, we're dealing with, with the parking structure as well as, as um, uh, just making sure that our campus is, is accessible for, for everyone. In this last minute or so we have, tell us about uh, uh, OK CEO and your involvement in it. OK CEO is, is the, the brainchild of, of, of um, the, the Potts Family Foundation. Uh, the Oklahoma Business Roundtable and Smart Start Oklahoma. Um, it's a pulling together of, of community and business leaders um, to make the case for and to urge um, the legislature and others to make sure that we continue to to support our most vulnerable citizens and mm -hmm. those are our early childhood, those that are from zero to three. Um, those are the most important years developmentally. And you've got a statewide program coming it's a, it, We do. It is um, uh, the second annual uh, conference. It's on August the 18th. If anyone is interested, they should go to smartstart.org. Um, yeah. okay, that's great. Natalie Shirley, our guest today on The Verdict. Thanks so Thank much for you. coming Thank on. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, it's a pleasure. Natalie Shirley, the president of Oklahoma State University, uh, OKC. We'll be right back with a final word after this. Good life comes naturally to Tulsa. 
where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record. Since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political, government, and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. When Natalie Shirley was... Uh, running the, the Commerce Department for the state of Oklahoma, I, she and I had a chance to sell Oklahoma on a national basis in, in front of some national media. She represents the state very well, uh, obviously very articulate, but can, uh, really talks about uh, the growth of business and the importance of jobs. And she was very much um, behind the scenes uh, helping us uh, uh, with the Boeing uh, uh, hmm. advancement. Uh, the, the, the adjustments that needed to be made in the Quality Jobs Act out of the state legislature, um, Natalie was very helpful in that. And, and a lot of those engineering jobs, hundreds of them now coming to Oklahoma City, a lot of them uh, had their start uh, with, with Natalie rolling up her sleeves and trying to figure out how we're going to raise the, the average wage of, of Oklahomans. So she's, well, she's been front and center. She's obviously got some uh, strong leadership skills, which will serve her well. Mm -hmm. Natalie Shirley, the president of Oklahoma State University, OKC. And, and if you'd like to get more information about uh, the wonderful educational offerings out there, let me send you to their website. You can reach them at okstate.edu. That's okstate.edu. We also have a website about this show. We'd love for you to go there and tell us about a guest you'd like to see on The Verdict. We'll see you next week. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.